Um, I'm Helen O'Dell Miller, I'm one of the staff here, um, and I, I was asked to talk about um, what happens in this building, as well as I've seen on the programme Music Therapy in Cambridge, so that might take a very long time. <laughs> <laughs> I know, and I'm used to giving lectures, um, which I'm not going to do, um, but I will, if you don't mind, say a few words, um, which will be for about, say, five or eight minutes, and be joined by a colleague in the middle of that. Um, so I just need to find the, the my look as if I'm going to give a lecture, but um, it's very interesting. So you can see that anyway, can't you? Um, this is what I usually do in my work <laughs> the technicals. Yeah, so it's fantastic to welcome you all, and I've learned so much um, about Leah Manning. And I know that between us, um, we, we have learned that really the legacy that she left um, from the work that she did, I think we can say that we are continuing. Um, one of our major areas of music therapy um, has been and still is um, in working with children and families and especially those who are disadvantaged and who have special needs. Um, but also our most recent um, plan is to develop um, some more work, outreach work. And so we are um, working with people at Arthur Rank to set up a post at Arthur Rank Hospice and I noticed um, the, the reference about Leah Manning really caring about um, children who were so starving and dying, um, that sort of made me think there are so many links all leading <coughs> with the work that we're continuing on. Um, we have three strands to what we do. So in 1994, here we set up the Masters of Music Therapy, which was the first Masters of Music Therapy in the UK. There had been music therapy training prior to that. Um, since the late 60s, but this was the first Masters. Um, and then prior to that, um, actually we set up Music Therapy in Cambridge. So um, in 1976, I was able to uh, take on the first post at the Learning Disability Service, which was then the Ida Darwin Hospital, and develop a music therapy service there, and later moved to the Adult Mental Health Service in the NHS, and worked there full time for many years, building up arts therapies. And then in parallel, and just coming slightly alongside and after, was Professor Amelia Oldfield, who is a real leader in the field of music therapy for children. Um, young children, under the age of five, and also showing how music therapy can help children with autism and their families um, throughout their life, but particularly sort of in their child years, adult, adolescent years, and, and further. Um, and so we together, wanted to learn from the work that we've been doing out there in the field in the National Health Service and um, we designed a training course here um, and at first we were based um, in uh, just around the corner from here uh, partly in Helmore which is the main um, campus here but also in a place called Paradise Street just around the corner in a building that was really not at all like paradise. <laughs> so it was the art department, some of you will know, um, and it had sort of the ceiling moved and um, flapped around, and if you wanted to go to the facilities and you needed to sort of nip out to the loo or something, you had to go right through the sculpture department and through classes where people were doing their work. It was, and it was quite dangerous as well. Sometimes we had to not teach there because it might be flooded. Or so. Um, so, helped um, uh, by this university, who always embraced our work as music therapists, um, and led by Paul Jackson, who's here, who was head of the Music Performing Arts, so it's had many different guises. And together with others in the room, um, we then were able to set up the master's course, and then later um, train over 300 students, um, and set up a clinic, and we've got photos on this, um, which show uh, the opening of the clinic that was in the Helmore building, where for many years we um, had sessions working with children, adults from the community as part of student placements for the people who are training to be music therapists, 
but also with contracts from the local NHS. Um, and then um, we were <laughs> given the opportunity to come to the school, which actually had been known by the Education Authority, and Dr. Frankie Williams is here, who was a leader from the Education Authority there, um, has been telling me some of the history we haven't heard about yet tonight. Um, and for some reason, and she may be able to tell you at the drinks when we get there, um, <laughs> uh, this, this building moved into derelict, derelict um, uh, state. And we're back. in this room, aren't we? Yes. yes. So yes. we're in this room. Do you have to turn the light on uh, the left hand one on mm. the top there? That's okay. So this is um, during the planning stage of moving the music therapy service to this building. Um, and I happen to know before that from sources that I won't disclose that this was also a squat. So at, at this point before that, it was sort of boarded up for about 15 years and during that shift of the kite area. Um, and uh, it was really derelict. So we had to have a new roof. We were lucky enough, left by um, also Vice Chancellor at the time, Mike Thorne, who happened to know um, a person whose second name is Murphy, and I can't... Richard. Thank you, Richard Murphy. Um, Well-known architect who, one of his schemes is that he developed Maggie's centres, so they are places for people to go during the day if they are having very painful, difficult cancer treatment, but they can then go to drop it from Maggie's centres. So we went to look at various centres that he designed, and then we worked Helen, who is another Helen, Helen Lote, who's going to speak in a minute, is... Um, has been here for 18 years. We, we like working here. We've <laughs> been here a long time. Um, and um, Paul Jackson and I and um, others, but mainly the three of us with Kevin <coughs> Loat, who's course leader of the Masters, um, were able to work with the architects and design this building into the current therapy centre that it now is. And we are grateful to Jerome Booth, who prior to him being cha chair of the board at Andy Ruskin, um, because of his interests um, that's why it's called the Jerome Booth Music Therapy Centre. It donated funds so that we could transform it into what it is now. Yeah, so um, I know that probably you're, you're really dying to get away, um, but I'd like to say that we've been here 25 years and that we had a 25 year conference um, and that we are here because of the students. So the three strands of the training of the students, the clinic, where we do work with people in the community and research. And the research is about doing really important, the scientific side really, where we're doing enormous countrywide and nation, um, international trials, for example. I'll say a bit more about that in a minute, um, with other countries in the world. At the 25th anniversary, these are the countries that were represented by alumni. So through the training course, and since 2013 when we moved here, Many students have passed through in music therapy and we celebrated that by inviting people who made a difference in their field and it's, uh, which um, rep was represented across 17 countries, the list was, was there. Um, so just to say that the clinic opened in Helmore in 2005 and then um, we came here with quite a lot of ceremony. We set up drama therapy as well in 2010. Um, I'll show you some photos to end the talk um, where we actually had a pageant where we, drama therapists are really good at role play and that is something that they do um, really well. And so we organised a ritualistic pageant from so that we made music and acted and were dressed up in order to move from the Helmore building to the new Jerome Booth Music Therapy Centre. Um, we do serious research, but before that I'm going to hand over to Helen because she is a pioneer of working with children and families, both in this building and in, uh, connected with St Matthew's School locally. So over to you, Helen. Yeah, sorry, sorry, um, so I just wanted to quickly make the link with children, because, you know, we're talking about children here. Um, so, um, as Helen said, you know, music therapy in schools has been going on in Cambridge for quite a while, from the beginning of the course. Um, when we did do some uh, music therapy work with children in our old centre, 
but I just want to focus on here. So this is a little picture showing also our multi-camera technology that we have in the therapy room, as I showed people earlier. Um, so I ran for several years um, a groups, group, several groups, um, in conjunction with Eddie's, which used to be called Cambridgeshire Mencap. So, and it's for preschool children who have a learning disability and family members. And so it'd be like multi-family music therapy. So two or three groups of those. So coming together to work with their children, to look at how they communicate, learn how to value their communication, help them develop their communication through music, because music speaks to all uh, children, particularly despite disability. Um, and, and also for support for their parents and the family members to be together and quite a community of support would grow up and they'd go and have coffee afterwards and then we could go sit in the garden out here and talk about what had happened in the music therapy with the parents and so on. Um, so that was a funded group and then uh, from when we were over in the clinic there we started working with local primary school and we continued that here and developed what interestingly the, what, somebody just said, <laughs> it's called the After School Club, um, but it's a, a music therapy project with the primary school to enable children in the school, not the children necessarily who have um, a, a specific diagnosis and then get some money to follow through getting care, but children who have behavioural or emotional difficulties, difficult family situations, the struggling in the school and so on, so that we could let them have some music therapy. And sometimes they come here and sometimes we go to the school and we have students in placement. So we'll put in a, a student and then we'll fund for the therapy or we'll put in qualified therapists. And that project has been funded by donations as part of the Music Therapy Appeal and also St Columba's Church, which is now at the Downing Place. Uh, been really generous in, in giving us donations and Cambridge, Cambridge Voices, of which are voices here, uh, do concerts and they also fundraise for that. So that's been uh, a really nice way of making uh, sure that people can have music therapy because I'm, I'm, you know, accessibility is a real thing. So being in the community, the physically accessible, the buildings are accessible, we want people to not, to be able to get music therapy who can't afford to pay privately. So I think that's been a really important thing. Um, other therapy groups and things go on in here with private therapy and other uh, relationships with groups, but I just wanted to bring the children in. Yes. Um, so I'll just flip through that. This um, is just about the history. So there, <laughs> there is another mayor um, with us opening the clinic in, in the Hellmore building. We were going to get the current mayor to play yes. spontaneously, but she heard she, about it and ran off. She apologised <laughs> and said she had another event. Um, so this is the pageant um, mm -hmm. celebrating the arrival to this building. Um, and then this is an up-to-date clip which actually in some ways captures the other work that we're doing, which is in addition to training students, we now have three or four very large grants for research, um, one from the Alzheimer's Society UK, which is working with five countries um, with couples where one person is living at home and the other is living with dementia, and we're looking at a comparison between music therapy being delivered in the home with reading and storytelling and with um, not having that. Um, it's a randomised control trial, very large. Um, and then also we're doing projects with stroke. I'm more of a specialist in working with adults um, and also we've responded to the dementia challenge and we're very pleased that we've contributed to the NICE guidelines and they now include um, a guideline about music therapy being important and beneficial for people with dementia. So I think um, it's not the time for a big um, lecture, but I think this um, sort of shows you just a little snapshot of music therapy in action and it summarises something about um, a few of our projects and it's a Look East news item and Jodie Blosker is a music therapist who's there, who's one of our team. Oh, that didn't work. Uh, I'll try again. Like, we use this every day. It cannot play the media. So, um, that's okay. So I think probably you're ready for your drinks, and you could. Um, there's a little bit more. Yeah, no, it's frozen again. To happen. Yeah. Um, but what that would have um, told you about is some of the neuroscience and brain research.